In the clip called Human and Collective Consciousness and Spirits in Bible Part 1, I described how spirits are formed. People's minds collectively give birth to certain spirits. There are many different ones. Some are considered good, some are considered bad, and some are good or bad depending on perspective. For example, the spirit of Christianity could be considered good by Christians and bad by atheists. Christians could sense a fatherly comfort from it, but atheists could sense a very controlling and dark spirit like in a cult. Atheists don't feel the same about the spirit of Christianity as Christians do. There could be a spirit of compassion. This is considered a good spirit by most people. There could be a spirit of envy. This one could be considered a bad spirit by most. So, as I mentioned in the other clip, spirits exist in people's minds and interact with their minds. They whisper things to people and give ideas and inspire them to do something. The spirit of envy or greed would whisper bad things to people, make them do bad things, make them think bad things. I'm sure nobody likes to be in the presence of the spirit of fear, because then you just sense fear. Spirits are basically collective consciousness. Different collections of people and their ideas, different collections of their brains and minds get linked together to form a spirit. So, as there are many different people groups, so there are many spirits because there are different ways to link the minds. So, for example, there could be a spirit of the particular church. This would be a smaller spirit under the umbrella of the spirit of Christianity. Or there could be a spirit of a certain country, which would be a smaller entity than the spirit of the whole world. The Bible mentions the spirit of the church. Revelation 3.22 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Revelation 2.1 To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, Bible uses spirit and angel interchangeably. In Hebrew 1.14, it says that angels are spirits. Imagine a family unit, two people and a child. Then imagine a bigger family unit, the same as above, plus parents and siblings. Then imagine an even bigger family unit, same as above, plus distant relatives, like cousins and aunts. There is a church family, there is a country family where people feel that they are one, they are patriotic. So in the same way, there are smaller spirits and bigger ones. There is a hierarchy, like the spirit of the church would be under the bigger spirit of that denomination, for example, the spirit of Baptists. The spirit of Baptists and spirit of Pentecostals are not exactly friendly, but they could submit to the spirit of Christianity. Sorry, I don't have good drawing ability, so I just uh, wanted to make a little visual to see it better. So the big circle, the biggest one, is the spirit of Christianity. The orange smaller circles are spirits of denominations. And the little red circles inside of each orange circle are spirits of churches. And inside each church, there are people who are making up the spirit of the church. So there very well could be the spirit of this age who controls people of this age. So Paul mentioned him, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the God of this age has blinded the minds. This could be two warring huge spirits. The spirits of Christianity fighting with the spirit of non-believers. Or there could be a spirit of Christ versus the spirit of Antichrist. Anti means the opposite of Christ. Or in 1 John 4.3 it says, But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. So this is 
so if this if the person does not subscribe to the beliefs of Christianity he cannot belong to the spirit of Christianity so John in this verse is trying to say that these beliefs do not belong to the spirit of what he believes is God these are strange beliefs they belong to a different spirit and he calls that other spirit Antichrist I would think that the biggest two spirits are the spirit of all good and the spirit of all bad. Some people see it as God and the devil or Satan. So the smaller spirits that belong under the umbrella of Satan would be spirits of envy, murder, greed, hate, jealousy, strife and other negative things. The smaller spirits that belong under the umbrella of God would be the spirits of compassion and mercy and all the other good things. Love is a mixture of all the good qualities, so love would be the huge spirit of the good side. And that's probably why Paul of the Bible equates the spirit of love with the spirit of God. Spirits have no form. They are consciousness, a mind. But our brain has the ability to translate them into some form. Also, our brain has the ability to give form to ideas and concepts. So for example, beauty, the concept, could be visualized as a beautiful woman. An ugly concept, like greed, could be visualized by an ugly woman or a man. Now people have the ability to visualize concepts, only the more psychic ones with certain talents. So I believe this is the reason that the spirit of fear is often pictured as some monster by people. Different people picture evil spirits in different ways. I guess their brain draws an imagery from the information that they have. Sometimes the devil could be pictured like a dragon from some science fiction. And who or what is the devil? I would imagine that it's that the spirit of the devil is the representation of all the evil 